consider an n dimensional cube for now you can think of a 3 dimensional cube so that we can visualize it how many equilateral triangles can be drawn using the vertices of this cube well here are some examples as a general problem solving tactic in mathematics it's always a good idea to have a systematic ordering of the objects involved in the question in this case we can assume the cube to be a unit cube whose vertices have coordinates composed of only zeros and ones it's also a good idea to use the defining features of the objects in the question in using the coordinate system to number the vertices of the cube we have already used up its definition The second object in the question of course is the equilateral triangle and how do we define an equilateral triangle well it's a collection of three points which are equidistant from each other so now the question can be rephrased to ask how many triplets of vertices of an n dimensional cube are equidistant from each other and that brings us to distance If we want to find the distance between these two points, we simply take the square root of the number of places where the coordinates of these two points differ. But don't you agree when I say that the square root part seems pretty unnecessary? So we can skip taking the square root and just look at the number of places where the coordinates of any two points differ. This is also called the taxi cab distance and henceforth when I say distance, this is what I'll be referring to. Now Let's count the number of triangles. Notice that all the vertices of an n-dimensional cube are symmetric with respect to each other. What I mean by that is, if you take any two vertices of the cube, say P and Q, the number of equilateral triangles with P as a vertex is the same as the number of equilateral triangles with Q as a vertex. So if we let n be the number of equilateral triangles with the origin as a vertex, then we can write the total number of equilateral triangles in terms of n. First, we multiply by 2 to the n because we have 2 to the n vertices in the cube. Then we divide by 3 because each and every equilateral triangle will be counted exactly 3 times. This can be seen as follows. If we consider an equilateral triangle with the vertices P, Q and R, it will be counted 3 times with P as the main vertex once, with Q as the main vertex once and with R as the main vertex once. Now, the question boils down to simply finding n. Let's try to answer this question with an example. One thing you may notice is that P1 and P2 have the same number of ones in their coordinates. Can you think of why that is? One thing you may come up with at this point is using a set to denote a coordinate. So basically what we do is every time we see a one in the coordinate we put the position of that one into the set let's denote the set corresponding with p1 with s of p1 and the set corresponding with p2 as s of p2 using the property from before that p1 and p2 have the same number of ones in their coordinates we can say that the number of elements in s of p1 and the number of elements in s of p2 must be the same let's call this number of elements a Another thing which you may have noticed from this example is that the intersection of s of p1 and s of p2 has a by 2 elements. I leave the reasoning for this to you, but here's a hint on the screen. So this obviously must mean that a is even, and if a is even, we can say that it is equal to 2k, where k is some integer. We also know that the union of s of p1 and s of p2 must have n or lesser elements and this gives us an upper bound on k. And now is the time for some combinatorics. Since the correspondence between s of p1 and p1 and s of p2 and p2 is a 1 1 correspondence, we can say that the number of ways of selecting p1 and p2 is the same as the number of ways of selecting s of p1 and s of p2.
If we look at the Venn diagram of S of P1 and S of P2, we can first select their intersection and then we can select the elements which go in the part which is not their intersection. The division by 2 is simply because we don't want to interchange P1 and P2 and call that a new equilateral triangle. And now if we add this expression as k varies over all the values which it can take, we get the value of n. And from there, we simply get the value for the total number of equilateral triangles and we have solved the question. But wait, before you go, here's a challenge for you. Can you show that this huge summation which we have is actually just the number of ways of selecting three equal teams from n players? I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.